Continuing on with our particle theory, let's take a look at a few methods to separate mixtures. To begin with, I'm going to start with a mixture of sand and salt. And let's take that sand and salt mixture and place it down here in a beaker. To this beaker, I'm going to add water. The salt particles present in my mixture will then dissolve in that water that I've added, leaving the sand behind. So I'll now have essentially salty water and wet sand at the bottom. This method of separation is called salation. And it involves separating particles based on their solubility differences. Let's now take our salty water mixture. And now we're going to pour that through a funnel. And inside that funnel, we'll have some filter paper. Filtration works on the different sizes of our particles. The larger sand particles will end up being retained up here in the filter paper. Meanwhile, the salty water will move down here because the salt particles, once they're dissolved, become quite small. So filtration is based on separating particles based on their size. Now, now that we have the sand separated from the salty water, let's take the salty water now and place it in an evaporating dish. Here, what will happen is the salt crystals will remain behind as the water evaporates away. This means of separation is called crystallization, and it's separating the particles based on their ease of evaporation. Now we'll take a look at a couple more complex methods. Here I'm dealing with a technique called chromatography. You might have done something similar in earlier grades, where you might take a, a drop of ink and place it down here at the bottom of some chromatography paper and then a solvent is then absorbed by that paper. As the solvent moves through that particular drop, some of the components, this blue component, is attracted to the solvent and moves with it as it moves up the paper. The yellow component is not quite as attracted to the solvent, perhaps a little bit more liking or affinity for the paper, and tends to lag behind. So chromatography is based on a particle's affinity or liking for either the mobile phase, the solvent in this case, which was probably water, and the stationary phase, which in this case was the paper. My final technique of distillation involves this apparatus. So down in here, we would perhaps put our mixture containing, say, alcohol particles and water. Now these two materials have different boiling points, water, 100 degrees Celsius, and depending on the alcohol, um, I'm going to choose ethyl alcohol. It's about 80 degrees Celsius. When we subject this mixture to heat, the alcohol is going to boil first. It is going to have weaker forces between its particles. And the alcohol particles, which I'll show here as dark dots, will make their way up this chamber and down this way. Flowing through this tube, 
I have cold water. This cold water doesn't make direct contact with the vapor of alcohol. It is merely done to provide a jacket around it, to cool it off, which then causes the condensed alcohol to drip over here and collect in this beaker. My water, however, has remained behind. So distillation separates substances based on their differences in boiling points. So that's a quick review of some of the methods of separating mixtures.